Welcome to Morning Point's Virtual Caregiver Cafe series, Don't React, Adapt. I am Rachel Turner, and I will be your host for today. We have the pleasure of hearing from the Weston Group on strategies for seniors to help increase independence and improve quality of life. Today's topics of discussion include everyday living modification to your home to help reduce falls, adaptive equipment to maximize independence, and solid strategies to enhance quality of life. We would like to thank the Morning Point Foundation for collaborating with us to make this exceptional event happen. And now I would like to introduce Audra Hopkins, Executive Director of the Morning Point Foundation. Thank you, Rachel. Hello and welcome. The Morning Point Foundation has been working hard over the past six years to support caregivers, provide resources, and raise money for nursing students. The foundation collaborates with nine schools across the Southeast. Since 2014, we have provided scholarships to over 60 nursing students. It is with great pleasure that I recognize our sponsors for this event. First Horizon Bank, Capel Insurance, The Weston Group, Chattanooga State Community College, UBS, First Bank, and the Alzheimer's Association. Each sponsor helps us achieve our goal of supporting nursing students and caregiver support programs. If you would like to become a sponsor or to learn more about the foundation, please visit the Morning Point Foundation website. Thank you, Audra. It is my pleasure to introduce the Weston Group, Don't React, Adapt, Caregiver Cafe. During this event, we encourage you to ask questions via the chat button available in the Zoom application. The panel will receive the questions and address them following this broadcast. You will receive an email following the event with answers to all questions submitted. Hello, my name is Hannah Doyle and I'm an occupational therapist with the Wisting Group. This is my partner, Haley Grove, who is also an occupational therapist. We both have worked for the Weston Group for several years and we enjoy the opportunity it gives us to connect and grow quality relationships with residents at Morning Point while being able to provide meaningful therapy services. At the Weston Group, our company mission is to provide a full range of person-centered, evidence-based therapeutic services to maximize the individual's ability to function independently, thus enhancing quality of life. Our services include physical, occupational, and speech therapy. Today, we will be speaking on ways to reduce falls and increase independence with ADLs, or activities of daily living. Our ADLs encompass daily occupations such as dressing, toileting, bathing, walking, and feeding. Strategies we will be discussing include environmental modifications to reduce falls, use of adaptive equipment, and participating in meaningful activities to improve quality of life. Let's talk about bathroom safety. Come into the bathroom with me. Whenever you're walking into a bathroom, you want to make sure you've got as much room as possible. That means limiting clutter such as excess furniture, clothing or hampers that may be in the walkway. Items such as rugs can be very dangerous if a patient were to slip on them, so you're going to want to use a non-skid backing or rug tape to prevent it from moving back and forth. Other items that are necessary, such as a trash can, will need to be moved back as far towards the wall as possible. The wider the pathway, the easier it's going to be for any transfers that a caregiver needs to help you with. Now we're in the bathroom and we're gonna focus on the toilet. What you see right here is an elevated toilet seat and this you'll just lift the toilet lid and it secures to the toilet base it gives it a little bit extra height and you have the armrest to push up from. So when you're going to sit down, you're gonna reach back behind you. You've got this to help steady. Then when you stand up, you'll push from here to stand back up. You also have the toilet rails here, which is really nice to help stabilize yourself when you're completing toileting, pulling pants up and pants down, and just to help caregivers when they're doing the transfer. 
Other options, if you already have the height of the toilet that you like, you don't need the elevated height, you can use toilet rails that can either connect to the toilet base and come out and it's only just the rails, or you can get them where they will secure into the wall and you can flip them up and flip them down just to give you something to push up from. Different options also are a bedside commode where you would put it over the toilet to give you the rails and the elevated height and a splash guard that will go around the toilet bowl to keep anything from coming out, getting on the floor and causing a fall risk. Um, they make a bariatric bedside commode, gives a little bit extra space on the sides, which is helpful even if you're not bariatric weight, which is a three, three to 350 pounds, when you're leaning side to side to complete toileting, if you have trouble doing that in the standing position. This gives you a little bit different um, options that you can do in the bathroom, but it all depends on the environment and the amount of room that you're working with. Now we're gonna focus on shower transfers. And this can be the one thing in a patient's week that gives them the most fear of falling because they are having to step in and out of a wet surface. But there are plenty of items that you can use to keep you from falling. Um, so we have our patient here, and if you're the caregiver, you're gonna wanna stay very close to them, have them back up to the tub transfer bench. Make sure you can feel it behind your legs and slowly lower while you're reaching behind you for the bench. Um, right here, you see a shower stall, so you don't have the tub that comes up, but this also works with a tub. So when the patient is turning, she can lift her legs over the edge of the tub and not have to stand and lift one leg at a time over the edge into a wet surface. Um, this gives her a little bit more security when she is completing her transfer. In the shower stall, you'll see grab bars that the patient can use when she goes from a sitting position to a standing position if she needs to clean the perineal region, upper legs, and then easily sit back down to give her some more security when she's transitioning. Another thing that is very helpful is having a shower mat that she can secure her feet on when she's going from standing to sitting and vice versa. There is a handheld shower sprayer that will allow the patient to rinse themselves without staff having to do it or caregivers having to do it for them, which gives them a little bit more independence. Um, then to come back out, she'll slide to the side, lift legs over, and as the caregiver, if they need a little help lifting legs, you're right here nice and close to help them, making sure that when she does stand up, you want to make sure that her feet are dry. So taking a towel, dry everything off, make sure that the floor is dry before having her coming back to a standing position. Um, there is a shower curtain right here. And something that people say makes them nervous is that when they use the shower curtain, it blocks them from being able to get in and out. But one of the things that you can do is cut two slits in the shower curtain and stick it underneath the bottom of the patient to help keep all the water in, but also give them a little bit more privacy. Other options besides the tub transfer bench is a shower chair, and this sits completely in the shower stall. Um, it gives you the same kind of independence, but this, a tub transfer bench is better when you actually have a tub that you need to get over. So the shower chair sits all the way in the stall and you can get one that has a back on it and has the armrest to help you push up and slowly lower yourself down. Um, in my opinion, those are the safest. They do make the stools, but in a wet environment, I don't feel those are the most safe option um, for the patient. If you're having any kind of balance deficits or if a caregiver or staff member is needed to help in the transfer.
oftentimes grooming tasks at the sink can kind of take a back burner to the more involved tasks such as bathing and toileting or dressing because it doesn't take as much energy and once you're finished taking a shower and getting dressed, you're too tired to worry about grooming. But oral health and hygiene are so important. So some different things that you can do in the bathroom. If standing at the sink is too difficult for an extended period of time, you can often transition from the seated position to the standing position as your body can tolerate it. Um, if you have different kinds of difficulties such as arthritis, shoulder impingement, range of motion deficits that make it difficult for you to reach up, brush your teeth, brush your hair. You can use long handled toothbrushes, long handled combs to help you where you don't have to lift up as high. You can stay down here, but the long handle will allow you to still be able to style your hair and make sure that your teeth have been brushed. Um, another option, if you have arthritis and it's difficult for you to grip onto the toothbrush, the comb, the razor, is to get some grip tubing that can either be bought at Lowe's, Home Depot, or you can get the specialized grip tubing from a therapy company. You can slide your toothbrush or your razor, comb, anything into it. It gives it a little bit more of a ease of gripping whereas before you'd have to really use your fine motor to be able to do it. Um, if you're in your wheelchair and it's difficult for you to get close enough to the sink to brush your teeth, a lot of patients have opened up their bottom cabinet to make it easier for them to get closer and they'll place their feet inside the cabinet in order for them to get their mouth and their face as close to the sink as possible. Something else that makes it a lot easier during grooming is to limit the clutter that you have on your countertop and only keep out the items that you need on a daily basis, such as your comb, your toothbrush, things that you're gonna be using every day to make it easier for you to access them and just eliminate the items that you don't need. discussing bedroom safety specifically here at the bed. There are different types of beds that can be used for safety, um, including hospital beds, adjustable height, electric beds, or standard beds with just adding adaptive equipment onto them. The different hospital beds have electric controls that can be raised up and down to better equip you to get up and down a little bit easier, as well as adjustable height, head and feet. Um, Hospital beds also come with different rails that can come with a full length rail or a quarter rail, depending on what type of equipment that you need. You can also buy standard beds now that are adjustable, that have the electric controls to raise the head and feet up, which are very nice. Here we just have a regular bed that we've added a bed rail onto. This bed rail actually fits in between the mattress and box springs, so it is not going anywhere. It's very stable. It can help someone get up and down a little bit more easily. So we're gonna demonstrate the bed rail. So you're gonna hold on and help pull yourself up. Haley here is also using the leg lifter to help get her foot up on the bed a little bit easier. If you have a leg that's a little bit weaker or difficulty with range of motion, you can always use your arms to help pull that leg up onto the bed with the leg lifter. And then you do the opposite to get back up. You're gonna pull with your arms to bring your foot off, reach over, grab the bed rail and sit back up. Other ways that you can adjust the beds are adding risers to the bed if it does need to be a little bit taller. And if it's the opposite, you need it to be a little bit shorter, you can always take the box spring out and just use the mattress. Next, we're gonna be discussing different types of assistive devices. There are all types of assistive devices out there, such as wheelchairs, canes, walkers. So it's really about finding what's best and safest for you. 
There are manual wheelchairs that people can use that have the two big wheels on the side that you push with your arms. Those are for people who can't walk long distances but still want to get that mobility and exercise either using your arms or your feet. If you aren't able to walk those long distances or you have endurance deficits, then you may want to consider a power wheelchair or an electric scooter that uses a joystick control or a steering wheel to help get you through those longer distances. And then we can go to walking assistive devices. This is a rollator. It has four wheels, a seat, and brakes. These are for people who have a little bit more balance and need to walk longer distances that they may can sit and rest if needed, if going shopping or to the store, because it also folds up. Haley is gonna demonstrate how to use the rollator. First, you're gonna lock the brakes down by pushing the handles down. You're gonna stand up by reaching back behind you, pushing up to stand, and then squeezing the brakes to release. Next, here we have just a regular rolling walker that is very portable because it does fold up and is easy to store and place in your car if you're going somewhere. The rolling walker only has two wheels on the front and then at the back um, has stationary legs unless you want to use something different. Some people like to use tennis balls on the back of their rolling walker if they're gonna be walking a lot on hardwood floors so it doesn't scratch them up or they may like the walker glider skis as well. These are for um, a little bit higher pile carpet. So there are so many different options. If you are considering what type of device is best for you, you can always talk to your therapist and we can make those recommendations for you. We are now going to talk about some modifications for the kitchen that you can use during self-feeding. And you can use this as the patient or as the caregiver to help them be able to maintain their independence with self-feeding. Patients that have arthritis, it may be difficult for them to grip their utensil. So a foam grip will help them be able to better control the utensil for scooping and for bringing to their mouth. If a patient has Parkinson's disease, a lot of times you'll notice that they have a trimmer, which makes it difficult when you're trying to scoop and bring to your mouth. Therefore, a weighted utensil will help stabilize and makes it a lot easier for them to be able to feed themselves. If these options just do not work for you, a lot of people will transition to a finger food diet only to make it easier for them to be able to feed themselves rather than staff or a caregiver having to do it for them. Changing the colors of mugs versus the liquid will make it a lot easier if a patient does have difficulties with their vision. While you're holding onto a white mug, drinking a dark coffee out of it, you know when the liquid is coming to your mouth, so there's less likely that you may get burned. Same thing with oatmeal. You've got this dark mug, you can put the oatmeal in there and it makes it a lot easier for you to scoop and bring it up to your mouth. For arthritis, if it's difficult for you to hold a cup, cups with indentations or with handles make it a lot easier to stabilize so that you're not spilling your food all over you. For plates, something that can be done is using a divided plate. This will help the patient better orient where the food is. The, the staff or caregiver can also help with locating items using the clock method, such as your meat is at three o'clock or your vegetable is at nine o'clock. The patient will then know what they are bringing to their mouth so it's not a surprise when they taste it. Another option would be to use a plate guard, which will help when you've got your utensil, you can scoop up against it and bring to your mouth to help you get better bite sizes on your utensil and it keeps you from spilling into your lab. Now we're gonna be talking about a few pieces of available adaptive equipment used for dressing. Most of the items that we have here today are collectively known as a hip kit. This is traditionally given to people who have total hip replacements, 
but as therapists, we use them for a variety of diagnoses and symptoms, including back pain, hip pain, range of motion deficits, or people who are fearful of bending over due to falling. Haley is gonna demonstrate some of the use of this equipment, starting with the sock aid. So she's gonna take the sock aid, place it in her lap. We're gonna take the sock and then slide it over the edge of the sock aid, pushing it to the very top, making sure to not go past the knots on the side. You're then gonna hold the handles, dropping the sock aid down to the ground. Slide your foot into the sock aid and then gently pull up with the handles. Then you're gonna drop one of the handles down to be able to pull the sock, sock aid back up into your lap. Next, we're gonna use the dressing stick. The dressing stick has several hooks on the end that can be used for donning and doffing different pieces of clothing. Haley is gonna use it to help take off her sock. So she's gonna slide one of the hooks between the sock and her foot, pushing off the hill and then pushing down towards the ground. She's then gonna use the dressing stick to help pick the sock back up off the ground instead of, instead of bending forward to pick it up. Next, we have a reacher or grabber, as some people like to say. For dressing, we like to use the reacher to help put our pants on. So you would hold the reacher and grab the waistband of your pants, dropping them down to the ground to put your legs in instead of reaching forward and pulling your pants up. Obviously, a lot of people use the reacher for a lot of different things, including picking things up off the ground or picking things up from a higher surface, such as removing items from the closet. Next, we have a long handled shoehorn. So the shoehorn is gonna be able to help put our shoes on without bending forward again. She's gonna use it to place the shoe onto the ground, sliding the shoehorn to the back of the heel and then pushing down to put the shoe completely on. If you'll notice, this shoe also has the elastic shoelaces so that you're not constantly having to tie and untie shoelaces when taking your shoes on and off. A lot of these pieces of equipment are very inexpensive, but are also very effective in helping increase your independence with dressing. Now we are going to be talking about some modifications and adaptations that we can use with our residents with low vision due to glycoma, macular degeneration, or diabetic retinopathy. People with low vision have difficulty participating in ADLs and often feel isolated and depressed from the rest of the assisted living facility. One of the easiest things that we can do as therapists is use green contrast tape. We use green tape because this is more easily seen by most residents, and we use it on thresholds, over grab bars, on microwave buttons or light plates in order to improve an individual's function and increase their independence with all their daily activities. Um, this is something very simple and easily done and can do a world of good. One of the most inexpensive and often overlooked modifications that can be made is just using natural light. Moving your chair near a window, opening the blinds, or going to your local hardware store and buying natural light bulbs for your lamps or light fixtures can make it so much easier when you're trying to read the newspaper or read a book. Other equipment that can be used are large button TV remotes or phones. These items sometimes can be given to you by your local cable and telephone companies, or they can be purchased individually. But these often help people be able to watch TV with increased independence and communicate with family and friends. And lastly, Something that has affected me personally is that my granddad is 97 years old and his most favorite thing to do when he wakes up in the morning is grab a cup of coffee and read his newspaper. 
he got to where he was unable to do this. And our family was able to purchase him a magnifier with a light on it. He takes his newspaper, slides it under, and it scans the picture up and makes it a lot bigger so that he's now able to read and get back to an activity that he enjoys doing every morning. He's made the comment to my dad that this has really just made a difference in his life and he enjoys getting up because he's excited about getting to read the newspaper again. Now we are going to be talking about safe car transfers. Today we are using a transport wheelchair and we really like transport wheelchairs because they're very lightweight and portable. They're able to be folded up and put in the back seat of your vehicle in order to go to doctor's appointments or grocery shopping. What I also like about the transport wheelchair is the brakes here that you can use to help safely position your loved one to complete the transfer. So now Haley is gonna demonstrate the transfer for us. She's gonna slide forward in the chair, push up from the armrest of the wheelchair, and as she's turning, she's reaching for the car handle here, as well as the one that we applied to the car door frame. She's then gonna twist her feet in and come to a seat. Then as she's coming back out, she's gonna do the exact opposite. She's gonna twist her feet to come outside of the car while grabbing for the car handles here and here. She'll push up and come to a stand while reaching for the wheelchair handle. Thank you so much for listening to our presentation, and we hope you learned some ideas to use with your loved ones to improve their quality of life and to reduce falls and increase independence. If you have any further questions or comments, please visit us at www.westingroupinc.com. Thank you for joining us. We hope you enjoyed this Caregiver Cafe brought to you by the Morning Point Foundation. Please join us for future Caregiver Cafes as we continue discussions around senior care with topics such as depression in seniors and senior health and wellness. For more information, please visit our website or get in contact with a local Morning Point associate.